Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Watcher episode 7, maybe? It's, uh, it's 6, 7? I don't know, guys. I honestly don't remember. But whatever episode it is, we're here for it. We are covering May through August 2007. And, you know, we get a title fight. I'm pretty sure we got the, uh, the title fight on tap for Mr... George Joe, where's my short list? There it is. George Joe will be facing off with nobody. He is the champion. I mean, he'll be facing off somebody, maybe. But George Joe won the uh, Cage Rage title off of Ian Freeman to move to six and zero in his career. All of his fights have ended with a stoppage, and that is just fantastic. So, whatever whatever fight we may have coming up, let's just start simming, and we'll get to it when we get to it. And as is tradition from, you know, the last two episodes, we will be putting the power rankings up on screen while we sim this first week so that you can, you know, peruse them or whatever it is you do with power rankings. There you go. Aren't they powerful? All right, folks, we are in Kanto for Pride 41, headlined by Mirko Filipovich versus Sergei Karatanov for the Pride Heavyweight Champion because Fedor did drugs. But on the prelims, we feature Tim Sylvia versus Eric Fonga. Fonga on a bit of a losing streak right now, but will have the chance to prove himself against the former UFC heavyweight champion. The former Rookie of the Year has lost to Jason Farron and Tank Abbott in back-to-back -back fights, and is now f maybe fighting for his pride life here um, against the main Yak, Tim Sylvia. That's a terrible nickname. He is coming off a loss to Fabricio Verdum in his pride debut. Um... And again, he is a former UFC heavyweight champion, um, defended it once against a guy named Gan McGee. Uh, apparently very weak to submission. Fonga, I don't believe, has any submission wins in his career. No. So we will have to see what happens, but let's get straight into it. If I remember correctly, Pride Rules is one 10-minute round followed by two 5-minute rounds. Uh, Sylvia... All right, the two men are going to be boxing back and forth. Sylvia tries for a jab. Fonga with a 1-2. Again, two. Fonga hits a big right hand here. Uh, Maniac Tim Sylvia, by the way, a minus 1,200 favorite with his 19-3 and career record. But Eric Fonga can knock anyone down with the power he's got. Oh, Sylvia catches Fonga's leg kick, drives him up against the ropes, and stomps his foot. That's not very nice. And again, just some smothering here up against the ropes. This is kind of how Bobby Braxton lost his fight. Um, Mario Yamasaki resets it. The two men are going to be striking again. Um, if there is no knockout, of course, it will go to judge's decision. Fonga hits a big right hand there. Tough to say who's had the better of the round so far. Fonga hits a right, right cross, lands hard. Sylvia kind of has to shake that one off. Sylvia lands a left hand. Fonga with a big right cross. Sylvia's down. Fonga going with the grounded pound. Sylvia's taking heavy shot after heavy shot, and that is it. Eric Fonga defeats the maniac, Tim Sylvia, and has got himself back in the win column here in Pride by taking out the former UFC heavyweight champion. That is a huge scalp to claim for Eric Fonga. Folks, his career is nowhere close to being over. That is an awesome result, and an awesome way to start off this episode. And next up, ladies and gentlemen, we are back in California for another Strike Force card. This one headlined by Daniel Pewter. Versus Shane Carwin. Pooter coming off a loss to Earl Mo. And Earl Mo's fighting earlier on the same card. Explain that one to me. Mo will be facing off with Brandon Lee Henkel, who we know here as a man that beat Anderson, Anderson, Anderson uh, earlier in his career. Henkel is 11 and 7 now, coming off that win against Anderson, and then a loss to Devin Cole in a title shot at Strike Force. So, big sexy Earl Mo 5 0 from Monkey's Eyebrow, Kentucky. He's a wrestler, currently training at the Hammer House, and is a minus 380 favorite. Brandon Lee Henkel with a more modest 11 and 7 wrestler. Um, and let's just get straight into it. Big Sexy Earl Moe versus Brandon Lee Henkel. Strike Force Pooter versus Carwin. Two men touch gloves. Big Sexy being one of the few men of our uh, career that is actually willing to do so. Henkel's trying to wrestle with Mo. Uh, Mo cut it on, under the eye with his first punch of the whole thing, and then Mo. Marches Henkel up against the cage and is going to dirty box him there for now. Mo looking for the takedown and hits a nice sweep takedown. Mo trying to get on top of him. Can't hold him down. They scramble and Mo ends up in guard. 
We'll have to see what the submission threat of Henkel is. Nothing really. Moe's trying to scramble for position, though, and Hinkle's in side control. Definitely landing some strikes there. Mo trying for his... Tr uh, Mo survives the arm triangle. Hinkle trying to get to guard. Can't get it yet here, and it looks like Mo is going to finish the end of this round on his back. Oh, the ref stands him back up, and they punch each other, and that's the end of round one. Pretty pretty boring. But given a 10-9 to Mo, according to the, uh, the game, maybe... We know that's not always accurate. Henkel trying to wrestle Mo against the cage, though. Mo definitely the better wrestler here than uh, Brandon Lee Henkel. Wrestling beats wrestling every time. Mo with some dirty boxing and a foot stomp. More dirty boxing. More dirty boxing. Left to the side of the stomach. That never feels good. And a knee strike. The referee separates them a little bit. Mo getting a little bit tired and misses a punch. We get halfway through the fight. Mo hits a straight right, though. Henkel trying to grapple again. Hinkle moves into the clinch, tries for the takedown, doesn't get it. Mo takes control of the grapple, and dirty boxing again. Mo's biggest uh, biggest tactic here just seems to be kind of pick him apart from range and then grapple. Just kind of dirty box him until they don't feel it anymore. Heading into the third of three rounds, Mo considered to be on top 2-0. Mo hitting some clean strikes at the beginning of the round. Again here, we keep going. Mo with a big right hand, left hand, straight right. Jab, 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 jab. Brandon Lee Henkel bleeding again. Henkel hasn't hit a single shot in this third round. As we pass the halfway mark, uh, Mo getting tired, but again, Henkel got nothing. With two minutes left, there's not much he can do here. Tries for the takedown. Mo out wrestles him once more. Shoves him up against the cage, and if he's smart here, he's just going to dirty box him for the next minute and a half here. Mo's looking exhausted, but it doesn't matter. There are seven seconds left, and that is the end of the fight. On my scorecard, 30-27 to Big Sexy Earl Mo. Earl Mo defeats Brandon Lee Henkel by unanimous decision. He's going to go ahead and move to 4-0 uh, and o in strike force, and really, really should be on the, the short list for a title shot here. But Big Sexy Earl Mo moves to 6-0 and o overall, 4-0 and o in strike force. Brandon Lee Henkel moves to 11-8, and eight, and that will put him at one win, two losses in strike force. Here's a bit of fairly interesting news for you all. Uh, George Joe has been offered a contract by Cage Warriors, who Joe d took some fights early in his career with, his first and third fights of his career, winning both of them, of course. And now Cage Warriors has come crawling back now that he's the Cage Rage Heavyweight Champion. Hopefully, um, we'll see what he chooses to do about it. Probably he'll take it, but it'll be interesting to see if that will end up resulting in him defending his title less. All right, a little bit of news here as we put a close on May. Bruno Guimas has been booked to face Dave Huckaba. What a name. Dave Huckaba at King of the Cage 64. Dave Huckaba 2-0 and o in his career. He is Dave Badman Huckaba. I'm sure Bruno, the one, is terrified. You know, 5-0 and o, Bruno, the one, Guimas. He really should be climbing the rankings, but instead he's fighting Dave Huckaba. Great. All right, we start off June with a big, with a trio of bookings. Ron Francis Jr. will be headlining against Roy Nelson at Elite XC. Roy Nelson, the King of the Cage heavyweight champion, eight and O undefeated, and that will be a title fight at Elite XC. Nelson versus Francis Jr. So the heavyweight champion will be crowned with three and O. Ron Francis Jr. facing off with uh, eight and O. Big Country Roy Nelson. The other bit of news. Jack Duplicious has been booked to face Kimo Leopoldo at K1 Heroes 14. Kimo with an 11-6 1 record. 1-1 um, one one in K1 so far. Um, former King of the Cage heavyweight champion. Should be a good fight. He fought at UFC 3, so what a throwback. Lost to Hoist Gracie. Which, you know, lots of people lose to Hoist Gracie, so no shame in that. Anyway, Kimo Leopoldo, 39 years old, will be facing off with Jack Duplicious. But here's a fight for you Billy Willie, Brock Lesnar. Yep, Brock Lesnar will be making his debut at Elite XC against our very own Billy Willie, who's 4-0, and but probably has never faced anyone quite like Brock Lesnar before. Uh, best of luck, Billy. Best of luck. I don't know what to tell you. June has been, like, the most boring month ever, but George Joe and Alex O'Reilly have both been booked. George Joe has been booked to face James Zikic for his first title defense, who happens to be the Cage Warriors light heavyweight champion, fighting up a... Uh, up a weight class here at heavyweight. So Cage Rage, sorry, he's the Cage Warriors light heavyweight champion. 
challenging for the Cage Rage Heavyweight Championship, currently held by George, the gentleman, Joe. So that'll be a fun fight at Cage Rage 24. Also at Cage Rage 24, Alex O'Reilly will be facing Jean Olav Inamo. Eeny meeny Inamo, you will be facing Alex O'Reilly. Um, Inamo holding a 3 and 2 Cage Rage record and an 8 and 2 record overall. Um, and they're fighting on the same card. So Cage Rage 24 taking place in July will be on this episode. So first title defense for George Joe. We have that to look forward to. Um, but, you know, June has just been the most boring month. I don't know what to tell you. All right, after a long, long layoff, we finally have our first, next, whatever. We have a fight. That's what's important. Dave Huckapa, the sacrificial lamb to the freight train that is Bruno Guimas. Both men undefeated so far. Huckapa at 2-0. and oh. Guimas at 5-0. and oh. Huckapa making his King of the Cage debut. Bruno Guimas already has three King of the Cage fights under his belt, and he's won them all. So the one versus, you know, Dave. Bad man. He's a bad man. He's also a plus 950 underdog, which means, for those of you unaware of betting odds, the odds makers expect him to get his head punched off. We'll see how that goes here at King of the Cage. It is his hometown. Uh, both fighters striking. Huckaba is a brawler. Um, Guino, Guimas is a mixed martial artist. Um, Huckaba missing a couple of strikes now. Bruno hitting a few. Huckaba hits a jab. Guimas hits a big, hits a single right, attacking with strikes now. Huckaba gets a counter jab. Ooh. Huckaba nearly gets that big punch. It, all it feels like, it feels like one big punch from Guimas is really going to end uh, Huckaba's night. Guimas did just kick his legs quite hard. Misses the air with a big right. Um, both fighters back and forth, back and forth. Um, Guimas trying with a low kick, and then goes for a takedown there. Huckaba sprawls. Huckaba getting tired faster than Guimas is, despite Guimas. Ooh, right, lands a right hand cleanly. Huckaba tries a takedown. Guimas sprawls. No successful takedowns in the first round, but definitely a 10 9 to Guimas. Guimas a minus 1200 favorite, fighting out of the Minnesota Martial Arts Academy, despite being Portuguese. We're still not sure why a Portuguese man decided to go to Minnesota. Guimas blocks another takedown. Getting to the gas tank just a little bit there, coming forward on the attack. Huckaba misses a leg left, and Guimas hits a huge leg kick. Huckaba's limping for sure, and there's still over half the fight left. Oh, right head kick from Guimas. That had to hurt. Guimas is kicking him in the legs, kicking him in the head, hits a roundhouse kick. Huckaba wobbling. Big right uppercut. Right hand. Huckaba's out cold. And the one, Bruno Guimas, moves to 6 0, 4 0 of King of the Cage as he knocks out the bad man, Dave Huckaba who really was absolutely not in his league. Dave, you might be a bad man, but Guimas, he's the one. Ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Braxton has a fight. A Japanese local show in August. He will be picking up, uh, you know, another fight. So, good for you, Bobby. Won his last fight. Thankfully, uh, against Katsu Hiza Fuji. Um, and he'll be picking up another local fight as he looks to get back on track to retain his momentum from a tough, tough pancreas career. Other than that, that's all the news. Bad news for Alex O'Reilly fans. Uh, he, his opponent, John Olav Inamo, has been injured, and thus the fight has been canceled. So, tough news for Alex. We will not be seeing him fight, apparently, but um, Alex is okay, which is important. Uh, Ron Ran Francis Jr. has left Strikeforce due to contract expiry after going 1-0 uh, there is all. Um, of course, he has that upcoming heavyweight Elite XC heavyweight title fight, so he doesn't seem like he'll be too down in the dumps. And Billy Willie has also left Strikeforce uh, after accruing a 2-0 record there. So two promising heavyweights leaving Strikeforce due to contract expiry. So tough, tough uh, loss for Strikeforce, I guess. All right, we start an incredibly exciting night at Elite XC. Um, with Brock Lesnar facing off with Billy Willie in the Elite XC Heavyweight Division. Um, this is the co-main event of the evening. Brock Lesnar, minus 200 favorite, making his professional professional fighting debut. He is a wrestler, and Billy Willie from Little Rock, Arkansas. He is a master of thug jitsu and is a plus 150 underdog. Could go either way tonight. Billy Willie holding a 4-0 record, also making his Elite XC debut. Folks, it's a big, big fight. I don't need to tell you who Brock Lesnar is. Let's get straight into it. Thank you. 
Here's the opening bell. Two fighters touch gloves. Definitely going to be a bit of a striking battle. Willie misses the big right hand. Lesnar tries for the big takedown. Willie's on the ground now, back against the cage. Lesnar potting with some punches. We can't finish with him. Really can't uh, do a lot of damage here. Lesnar trying for a guillotine choke. Will Billy Willie fighting that up. Hitting some forearms to the back, but not doing a lot of damage. Lesnar tries for the guillotine, holding on and not tapping. Billy Willie is a thug, and he will not tap out to that. Willie trying for the arm bar. Nope, can't get it. Lesnar definitely trying not to get tapped here. Willie tries for another arm bar from the bottom. Uh, good defensive jujitsu from Billy Willie. Oh, he gets the arm bar, but he can't finish because the round ends. Billy Willie, the, maybe the winner on the cards of the first round, despite losing the takedown. Lesnar tries for a takedown twice, gets the second one, tries a couple of punches from half guard. Willie trying to scramble. Lesnar gets side control from that. That's not good. Knee strike to the ribs. Willie scrambles for position. Pinned against the cage by Lesnar. Two of them right against the cage. Minute or so, just short punches, short punches. Resetting now. Willie trying to hit some strikes. Big right hand cuts Lesnar open. Wrestling in the over-under clinch. You do not want to fight an NCAA wrestling champion like Lesnar in a wrestling battle. Willie pinned against the cage, and that's definitely a round for Lesnar. 1-1 one, one on my scorecard. So we enter round three. Lesnar evades a big right punch. Willie hits a left, hits a right. Jockeying for position. Lesnar definitely the aggressor here. Muscles Billy Willie up against the cage. Willie smothered against the cage. Next minute, nothing really happens. It's not great for Billy Willie. You're going to want to win this round. They reset. One minute, 40 seconds left in the fight. Willie with a big right hook. Lesnar trying to shoot. Willie, jab, right cross. Willie needs to win the striking here. Lesnar trying for a takedown but can't get it. Willie landing all, most of the punches. Misses three there, though. Lesnar dodging, defensive grappling, and pauses. We reach the time limit, and the fight is over. Now, the ring announcer is now giving the official scores. All three judges giving this as 29-28. To your winner, by unanimous decision... Billy Willie, wow, Billy Willie doesn't go, doesn't finish for the first time in his career, but he does withstand the onslaught of a young Brock Lesnar, I guess I say young, he's nine years older than Billy Willie here, but Brock Lesnar in his debut was unable to defeat Billy Willie, Thug Jitsu reigns supreme at Elite XC tonight. This win by Billy Willie would definitely set him up to be the number one contender to the Elite XC heavyweight champion. But who's it going to be? Billy Willie moves to 5-0. and oh. He wants to fight against Roy Nelson. Well, Roy Nelson's a little busy right now. He's currently the King of the Cage heavyweight champion, but he tries to become the Elite XC heavyweight champion of the world tonight. Um, referee Maru Yamasaki. Ron Francis Jr., 3-0, oh, a plus 330 underdog, versus Big Country Roy Nelson, 8-0, and, oh, and a minus 420 favorite. Let's get right into it. Touch gloves as we begin. 265 pounds on each side. Nelson trying for some punches. Hits a big right hook. Oh, Francis Jr. staggered. Smashes through the guard. Oh, Francis blocks maybe the kill shot there. Uh, maybe not. Francis Jr., yeah. I don't know if Ron Francis Jr. landed a single strike in that fight. 47 second TKO. Um, Ron Francis Jr. managed nothing, unfortunately. Uh, Roy Nelson absolutely battered him. So, not exactly the uh, fight that young Ron was looking for. He moves to, he drops to 3-1 and one in his career. Roy Nelson, 9-0, and oh, and now a double champ in the American Indies. Tough loss for Ron Francis Jr., but hopefully we will have to see how he rebounds. But before we can wallow in our sorrows too much, it's time for Cage Rage 24. George Joe defends his uh, Cage Rage Heavyweight Championship against James Zikic. Um, first title defense of George Joe's young title career, holding the absolutely gorgeous Cage Rage Heavyweight Championship. Um, Joe looks to move to 7-0 and in his career. George Joe has won all six fights in his career by stoppage. James Zikic with a 18 wins, six losses, and two draws in his career, impressively. However, uh, Zikic is definitely on a great run, has won four straight fights, including a title fight for the Cage Warriors Light Heavyweight Championship, fighting up a bit from his comfortable weight here. 
but everyone fights up a little bit for championship opportunities like this one. Let's get straight to our main event of the evening. Five rounds for the Cage Rage Heavyweight Championship. It won't go that long, folks. Joe's got 60, 60 pounds on him. Both fighters come together and strike. Zikic almost lands a big head kick. Joe, Joe with the right hand. Joe's hard-nosed boxing style has uh, yet to make its match. Joe with the big straight right. Zikic is down. Joe ground and pound. Zikic can't do anything about it. The referee has to stop the fight. And the winner in 1 minute and 20 seconds of the very first round is George the Gentleman Joe. There was nothing gentlemanly about that right hook. And there was even less gentlemanly nature about the ground and pound that follows. But the result is still the same. George Joe is still the heavyweight champion of Cage Rage after brutalizing James Zikic. Congratulations to George Joe. Please don't get arrested again. Breaking news, Bruno Guimas has left Minnesota, which, honestly, understandable. That's it. That's all the news. All right, as we move into the final month of this video, Anderson Anderson has been booked to face Mario Rinaldi at Elite XC Barrao versus Asun's Cow. Asun... As Mario Rinaldi. He's going to fight Mario Rinaldi. And Bruno Guimas has joined Hammer House, which, if I recall correctly, also features Earl Moe. And Kevin Randleman and Mark Coleman and Brandon Lee Hinkle. That is a heck of a team right there, folks. That is a strong, strong team. And as we head to a local show in Japan, um, on the prelims, we will be seeing Bobby Braxton take on a local fighter. This will be the eighth fight of Bobby Braxton's career. He's got a four and three record so far. He will be taking on Yajiro Oichi. Um, I'm going to call him Oichi because saying Yajiro is a super annoying. <laughs> Braxton washed out of Pancrase a bit, but has definitely tried to make a bit of a big head kick there, and Oichi's got knocked out. Bobby Braxton is wasting no time. He finished his last fight in 2 minutes and 8 seconds, and this one took him a minute 23. Um, Bobby Braxton making a big statement on the Japanese independent scene saying he's not quite done yet. So... We will have to see where he decides to go with his career for here, but congratulations to Bobby Braxton, now the proud owner of a two-fight win streak. As we head into the second week of August, Ron Francis Jr. has changed teams, but more importantly, Earl Moe has been booked for a title fight, and it is week one of September, meaning it will kick off our next episode. But Earl Moe has booked to face Devin Cole at, for his heavyweight championship. Devin Cole coming off a loss to Ron Francis Jr., but that was an elite XC. It doesn't even count. So, we will have to see how, if Earl Moe, Big Sexy himself, can take his wrestling style and bring himself to 7-0 and make himself a champion as well. Kind of forgot this was happening, but welcome to K1 Heroes 14. Uh, as Jack Duplicious... Makes his K1 Heroes second fight, not his debut, because he lost to Alexi Olenek, Kimo Leopoldo with a 1-1 record in uh, K1, also losing to Alexi Olenek, because everyone does, apparently. Two men will face off in the second prelim of the night, starting with a 10-minute round. Jack 4-1, and one. Leopoldo 11 wins, 6 losses, and 1 draw. Let's get straight into it. As we begin round one, a 10 minute round, the two fighters touch gloves. Jack Duplish is a wrestler and Leo Paldo a taekwondo fighter. Jack with a left hook. Straight right. Keep with a 1 2, definitely a striking battle so far. Great right hook from Jack. Jack with a left hand. Keep with a left hand. Very even so far. Jack on the attack. Keep with two left hands. Jack putting together some combos now. Not a whole lot coming of it. Jack trying to exchange strikes. Of course, Jack does have the big takedown threat if he needs it. Big right hand coming forward on the attack. Jab and a big right hand again, attacking with strikes. Counter jab now. Two jab and a right hand from Jack. Kimo landing two left hands. Misses the vicious right from Jack. So we get five minutes into the first round or so. Kimo with the one, two. Jack with the jet left jab, right cross. Jeff Jack definitely working on his combo striking here. Um... Hit a left jab and a good right hand. Kimo not looking steady right now. Kimo with a partial block. Jack coming forward as Kimo's chin maybe cracked a little bit. Big right hook from Jack. Every every big strike Jack lands from now on, you might want to just hold on for a big right hook again. Jack countered, though. 
Kimo with two left hands on the counter again. Jack missing his combo. Kimo lands a left hand. Straight right lands hard. Kimo shook again. Big right hand drops Kimo. Jack drops, unloading with punches. Kimo's getting destroyed. The referee has to stop the fight. And your winner by TKO, Jack Duplicious. Uh, 7 minutes and 44 seconds into round number 1. Jack moves to 1-1 one and one in K1 Heroes. And definitely a better result this time for him than last time out. Jack is a 5-1 and one fighter overall. Congratulations to him as Kilo Little Paldo drops to 11 wins, 7 losses, and 1 draw. Bit of news for you here. Alex O'Reilly is coming to the end of his CW contract and has entered the renegotiation period. He does have a contract with Cage Rage, which presumably lasts a little longer. He had another two years, whereas he's actually completed three of his four fights with Cage Warriors, so maybe he's just not willing to uh, sign with them. I don't know what's what's up with that. I believe George Joe had been offered a contract with Cage Warriors and chose to decline it, or at least there never was any news about him accepting it, so he is staying... He's also the... Oh, look at that. Let's take a quick look at this, actually. Or, we'll wait till the end of the month, but... Now nah, we won't. The heavyweight rankings of the world, George Joe. Our man, chilling at 23. Congratulations, George. Um, our first world-ranked fighter. Um, and just awesome for him. Very happy for him. Here's a little bit of news as well. Eric Funga is in book to face Victor Velimaki, 9-3 at Pride Bushido 10. That will be in November on the next episode, and headlined by Rampage Jackson vs. Bisping for the middleweight title. That'll be awesome. Uh, Verdum vs. Overeem. Uh, is that their first fight? It is. Interesting. It should be a good one. And Funga vs. Velimaki on the undercard at that one. Alex O'Reilly has also been booked to face Ian Freeman, the former champion uh, of Cage Rage at... It's not a four-fight losing streak, that's tough, but at Cage Rage 25, O'Reilly will be facing Ian Freeman, the former champion. All right, that brings us to the end of our episode. Feels like a short one, probably will be a short one. Um, not a lot of these fights went deep, but um, I do have a question for you all. Um, the editor in the game... The company editor, let's go to Pride, for example, um, it doesn't have close dates in there. Um, unfortunately, it does not have, um, it doesn't close, it won't close like Pride did in real life. Like Pride closed in real life, of course, um, but it will not close as far as this mod is concerned. Um, so. I want to ask you guys, do you want realistic, um, do you want realistic close dates? I can mod them in, it wouldn't be that hard, um, and we would, we would have, you know, more concentrated talent, um, obviously this pride's doing slightly better financially with 18 million, we would, we would, be, again, we would be concentrating the talent in one place. Um, like, this is PFL opening in 2018. We'll never close. Strike Force never closes, you know? So I need to I need to know what you guys want. Um, I'm willing to do it either way. I'll take a straight vote in the comments. Just think it will concentrate the talent in one place. Um, but, it, yeah, so it'll concentrate the talent in one place and then... You know, it, it'll be what it is. So I want to hear you guys' opinions. It'll concentrate the talent, but it will also cause like, you know, it'll cause pride to close. We won't have pride anymore. So it's up to you guys. Please voice your opinion uh, either in the YouTube comments or in the Discord. I'll tally it all up and I will get back to you next episode. So let me know what you think. Thanks.